Hello and welcome to this presentation about uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation. Uh, the theme of this segment is uh, fixtures and uh, loads. Uh, my name is Reza Tabatabai. I'm a senior technical manager for the simulation products at uh, Dassault Systems uh, SOLIDWORKS and I live in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. The topics uh, I will cover today. First, uh, I'll discuss uh, the significance of uh, model isolation and the selection of restraints and loads. I then review various types of restraints, followed by various types of loads that include force, torque and pressure, gravity and centrifugal loads, non-uniform distribution and bearing loads, prescribed displacements as loading, uh, the importing of flow and uh, thermal effects, remote loads and the mass, and finally a few words about uh, distributed mass loading. Boundary conditions, in other words, restraints and loads, uh, represent the interactions of the parts and the environment you did not model with the parts you did model. Uh, as a result, the restraints and loads you define must not impose displacements, stresses, rigidity, or other behavior that the parts and environment you didn't model would not have imposed. A selection of boundary conditions is a judgment call based on first, uh, what behavior is of uh, primary interest, and second, what level of accuracy is uh, required. Uh, because it is a judgment call, for uh, less uh, obvious cases, you may want to do some try and error to make sure you make the correct decision and uh, assumptions. Uh, fortunately, SOLIDWORKS simulation is easy to use, so uh, do take advantage of that and look at many different uh, scenarios. In choosing the restraints and deciding how to isolate the model, uh, one approach could be to choose the part or assembly uh, which you are interested in, assume some boundary conditions, and uh, run a simulation. Uh, after that, you add another layer of surrounding geometry, apply new boundary conditions, and uh, simulate again. By repeating this process, if adding new layers uh, do not significantly alter the results of interest, you are probably okay. Uh, as simple as this example is, you can clearly see the concept of layering and the judgment call you have to make based on what is important for you. Uh, if the stress in the fillet uh, in this cantilever beam is all you care about, uh, you should be fine with the simplest case on the left and be even on the conservative side. On the other hand, if the total deflection value under the load is of um, primary interest to you, uh, then the simpler case on the left will underestimate it and you should go with the more compli uh, complete model on the, on the far right. A second approach is to choose the part or assembly of interest, uh, study the relative stiffness of the part of interest with respect to the surrounding regions, uh, use engineering judgment to translate the surrounding to equivalence restraints and loads and uh, try uh, and error. Uh, in this example, you are interested in the behavior of the three-part uh, bracket assembly of a portion of the suspension system in a car. As the car turns, the rod exerts a force, uh, which is transferred to the bracket, and that in turn is hinged uh, to the rest of the system using three bolts. Uh, because of the rest of the system being rather stiff as uh, compared to the bra bracket assembly, you may decide to not include additional parts and substitute the effects by some hinge restraints on the cylindrical faces and the sliding surface uh, restraints on the back plate. Uh, these are approxim approximations, of course, uh, but for the behavior of interest and within the requirements of this analysis, you may see after some preliminary analysis, uh, it is probably good enough. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, the restraints are applied on geometric entities, which include surfaces, edges, and vertices. Uh, with the model being meshed, the restraints are internally applied to the respective nodes and degrees of freedom, that is the three translations and possibly three rotations, uh, depending on the element type of solids, shells, and beams in the model. Uh, sometimes you may want to apply a load or restraint on a portion of a surface or at a point where no uh, vertex exists. In these cases, you can use the split line functionality within SOLIDWORKS to create uh, subsurfaces, edges, and vertices as uh, needed.
Restraint types uh, include uh, standard restraints. These are fixed geometries, roller, slider, and uh, fixed hinge. Under advanced restraints, uh, to make it most flexible, uh, you can use reference geometry and apply restraints in Cartesian, uh, cylindrical, and uh, spherical, global, or user-defined coordinate systems on different entities. You can also take advantage of symmetry or cyclic symmetry if your model and loading qualifies for it. And the program will apply the right boundary conditions for these two scenarios uh, accordingly. In SOLIDWORKS simulation, you can have conventional loads like force, uh, torque, and pressure. Uh, if you're applying gravity, the density is taken from the assigned material property. You just need to define the direction of gravity and the value of uh, gravitational acceleration. In the real world, uh, forces and pressure distributions are mostly non-uniform. Uh, in many situations, though, uh, from a simulation point of view, the default uniform distribution is uh, valid, uh, especially if you are looking at the overall behavior. Uh, but in some applications, the non-uniform distribution may be significant. Uh, an example of a non-uniform distribution is the water pressure on the wall of a tank, which obviously changes with height. Uh, for the input, you define the distribution using a reference coordinate system that could be Cartesian, cylindrical, or spherical, and the respective uh, formula representing the relative magnitude of force applied at the XYZ location in the selected coordinate system. The summation of the non-uniform force is supposed to be equal to the force uh, value defined in the property manager. As a side note, uh, sometimes you may have a complicated uh, non-uniform uh, distribution of loads that you uh, calculate from an associated program like SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation. Uh, in that case, the pressure calculated will be mapped automatically from that analysis into the stress analysis of SOLIDWORKS simulation. Uh, an example of this uh, would be an external flow analysis of wind exerting uh, uh, pressure on a billboard in the highway or an internal problem of a rotating water uh, turbine and the resulting pressure on the blades. Centrifugal load uh, simulates the spinning of the whole uh, model about the fixed axis of rotation by doing a pseudo-static analysis of the dynamic system. Uh, it can be in the form of an angular velocity and or an angular acceleration. Uh, direction is important for acceleration. As you see here in this uh, propeller blade, uh, where the inertial lag in the displacements are in opposite directions. It is basically the same concept as the passenger of a car moving backward uh, with the car's uh, linear forward acceleration or moving forward with its uh, deceleration. Now, if you have other forces also superimposed on the model, they may increase or reduce the deformations due to the angular acceleration. Uh, this is not the case, though, with angular velocity. The velocity and acceleration values uh, may be found uh, from measurements, like from testing and accelerometers, or calculated from a kinematic software package like uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, motion simulation. Uh, remember that if uh, the input value you uh, plug in here is the peak value from a kinematic analysis, uh, be careful with the interpretation of results. If the duration of the peak velocity or acceleration was short, uh, the system may never reach uh, the values suggested here by this uh, static analysis. Bearing load command distributes uh, the applied load radially and non-uniformly along the cross-section of a cylindrical face or an edge of a shell. The load uh, could be, for example, due to a pin or a shaft. You may want to consider bearing loads near the edge of a plate or if wall thickness around the bore is small, otherwise the amount uh, and direction is important, not really uh, the more precise distribution. The load with a sinusoidal or parabolic distribution is applied to a cylindrical face or a portion of it in a predefined uh, coordinate system. Uh, sometimes you may not know uh, the force, or maybe you know the force, but prefer to apply the load as a non-zero resultant displacement restraint. Uh, this is no problem, but you have to be careful to get the right uh, behavior. 
Imagine the case of a simple cantilever fixed at one end and under a vertical force at the other end. Uh, you see here the stress distribution for the applied load. Knowing the end deflection, we will want to run the same problem but with a prescribed dis displacement instead. Uh, let's look at uh, two scenarios. In the first case, the prescribed displacement is applied on the edge and uh, the behavior is as expected and the same as the cantilever under the prescribed load. In the second case, the prescribed displacement is applied on the surfaces where the original force was applied. The prescribed the vertical displacement on the surface for a given value will make all the nodes on the surface displace in the same amount. That adds an artificial moment that would not let the surface bend freely. Uh, creates stress concentration around that region and higher stresses in the cantilever beam. You can include flow and thermal effects as loads. Uh, this brings you to the flow and thermal effects uh, tab of the study properties dialog box, which allows you to import uh, temperatures and loads from previous simulations. When using the input uh, temperature option, make sure to specify temperatures on components or shells. Specifying temperatures only on the boundary may not be practical since the temperature of zero is assumed at all other locations. Uh, if you define temperature on boundary only, you may need to create and solve a thermal study first to compute uh, temperatures at all nodes. Uh, the temperature distribution can either come from uh, another thermal study within SOLIDWORKS simulation or from a thermal study uh, from within a SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation. Uh, you also input a reference temperature at the zero strain in the model. Similarly, you can import uh, fluid pressure loads uh, from a SOLIDWORKS flow simulation results file. Remote load or mass applies uh, the effect of a part that is not modeled, thus avoiding modeling this part, meshing it, and uh, so on. It requires the location and type of the load transfer on the part modeled, a reference coordinate system, and the location, type, and value of the load due to the part not modeled. Remote load or mass is available in three different forms, which we discuss next. The first option for remote load or mass is a load in the form of a direct transfer. Uh, this is for cases when the part that is not modeled is rather flexible. Uh, keep in mind that we are still within the small displacement assumptions. Uh, forces or moments are applied at a remote location and with respect to a coordinate system or the global uh, coordinate system by default. Uh, the program does not change the stiffness of the part that is being modeled. It just automatically calculates and applies uh, equivalent forces uh, to selected uh, faces. As an example, if you apply a remote force F to a, for to a face as shown here, the program applies forces uh, that are equivalent to a moment M equal to the force F uh, times distance D in addition uh, to uh, the force F itself. The recommendation is to apply all uh, remote force and moment components, that is XYZ direction with uh, respect to a local coordinate system in one definition. The second option for remote load or mass is a load or mass in the form of a rigid connection. Uh, the way to define uh, is uh, like the previous case of uh, direct transfer. The main difference is that in the previous case, uh, the part not modeled had basically no stiffness, whereas in this case, it is rigid. Uh, that means a very high stiffness. Uh, the specified location is uh, connected to the selected entities by rigid bars. Uh, therefore, the faces defined for the load transfer will move as a rigid surface and not deform. Obviously, the rest of the model deforms uh, based on its stiffness distribution. You may also see uh, higher stresses developing near faces with uh, rigid connections. Using this option, you can also define a remote mass uh, to represent part or parts that are not uh, included in the simulation model. The location of the remote mass should be at the center of gravity, uh, that's the CG, of the unmodeled components. Uh, the mass moments of inertia are uh, calculated with respect to a coordinate system that is centered at the CG, 
and has XYZ axis parallel to the XYZ axis of the global or user-defined coordinate system. Uh, the third option for remote load uh, or mass is a displacement in the form of a rigid connection. Uh, what you are really doing here is to tie the deformation or degrees of freedom of some nodes to another node because of a rigid component connecting them together. So this is like a remote restraint really. Uh, at times that can come very handy to model different behaviors more uh, realistically. Uh, you can use this option when the replace the components are rigid enough with respect to the model components and you know the remote uh, translations and or rotations that can replace uh, its effect on the rest of the model. Uh, the point of application of the constraint is effectively connected to the selected faces by rigid bars. Uh, keep in mind the potential of uh, over stiffening. Uh, the selected face or faces being rigidly uh, connected to a common point uh, can only deform as a rigid body. Uh, the area and shape of each face uh, remains uh, unchanged. High stresses again can develop near faces with uh, rigid connections. Applying the wrong boundary conditions may significantly affect stresses and therefore the way you approach your uh, design. Uh, in this example, you have a U-shaped uh, frame uh, being held on uh, one end. On the other end, uh, in the testing lab, a jack uh, stand uh, pushes the part up for a specified uh, displacement. Uh, we are looking at two boundary conditions. One, uh, where you apply the disk displacement to the whole bottom surface. Uh, the other, where you use remote load in the form of uh, displacement. Uh, the first option would create a big artificial bending moment, uh, whereas the second option would let the cylinder simply tip on the flat uh, face. Uh, as you compare the displacement and stresses from the two cases, you see that the first one introduces unrealistic high stresses because of the unnatural boundary condition that uh, does not represent reality, but the second case is a lot uh, closer to the setup of the experiment. Using distributed mass uh, as load uh, distributes a specified mass on the selected faces for use with static, frequency, buckling, and linear dynamics studies. It simulates the effect of excluded components uh, when their mass can be assumed to be uniformly distributed on the specified faces. The distributed mass is assumed to lie uh, directly on the selected faces, so rotational effects are not considered. Use a remote mass if the mass cannot be assumed to be uniformly distributed. Uh, for static studies, you should define either gravity or centrifugal loads in order for the distributed mass to be effective. Uh, the program internally calculates the static load based on the acceleration due to gravity defined uh, in the gravity command or angular velocity and angular acceleration parameters uh, defined in the centrifugal load command. A few words to sum up. Isolate the model of interest wisely and model the rest of it uh, proper restraints and loads. We reviewed uh, many different possibilities here. Uh, beware of rigid bodies and over constraining. Choose the level of accuracy required and model accordingly. Uh, boundary conditions are idealization. Uh, always check your assumptions. And finally, the model behaves as you set it up so boundary conditions are extremely important. Uh, thank you very much for watching and your interest in Dassault Systems uh, SolidWorks uh, simulation uh, products.